Hi, I'm Rick Barron, and in today's ARIA 5 segment, I want to talk about the treatment of Guillain-Barre with plasmapheresis or IVIG. And the, this tale of two treatments really begins with this paper that was published in 1988 that is really a landmark paper in the history of investigator-initiated trials and multicenter trials in neurology. And this was the North American plasmapheresis study. In this paper, 220, it describes how 228 patients were randomized at 21 centers around the country to either plasmapheresis or nophoresis. And what they were able to show in this amazing study is that plasmapheresis uh, on patients with Guillain-Barre uh, decreased the time to uh, walk by 32 days and, on, and patients who had been on a ventilator by 72 uh, days and the average time on a ventilator decreased by 12 days. So in the 1980s, plasmapheresis became an important therapeutic intervention for Guillain-Barre syndrome. Then in the 1990s, the Dutch did a, a, a study with intravenous gamma globulin. So at this point, they couldn't do a randomized controlled trial with no treatment, so they compared IVIG with plasmapheresis. And what they were able to show in the first two columns is that the uh, patients that received IVIG and the patients that received plasmapheresis did about the same. Again, another large study, about 74 patients in each group, investigator-initiated study, another real triumph in, in, in the history of neurological science. And you can see on the, uh, next to it the numbers from the North American study. So now we had at this point in the 90s evidence that showed plasmapheresis helped Guillain-Barre patients recover quicker and IVIG helped. So then Dr. Hughes in England asked the next logical question, would doing both help even more? So he did yet another large Guillain-Barre syndrome investigator-initiated multicenter trial uh, in which large numbers of patients were randomized to three groups, plasmapheresis, IVIG, or plasmapheresis followed by IVIG. And what he was able to show is that all three groups behaved the same. So getting IVIG after phoresis didn't make their recovery speed up any quicker. So as a result of these three landmark articles, we have uh, statements from the American Academy of Neurology. The first uh, came out uh, uh, a little over 10 years ago. It was from the Quality Standards Subcommittee and it said that phoresis and IVIG hasten recovery from Guillain-Barre, and both could be used. They also looked at the steroid literature and said corticosteroids are not recommended. This was followed by two, practice, uh, uh, two papers from the Therapeutics and Technology Assessment Subcommittee. The first was on the evidence for plasmapheresis and neurologic disease, and this committee gave class, uh, said we had class one evidence for phoresis and Guillain-Barre and gave it a level A uh, for severe GBS, level B for mild GBS. And then uh, the same committee uh, published uh, IV, uh, IVIG in neurologic disease and said we had class one evidence for IVIG and GBS and gave a level A recommendation. So in summary, we have two good treatments for patients with significant Guillain-Barre who, uh, in which they've lost the ability to ambulate without assistance. And you can use either plasmapheresis or intravenous immune globulin, but the caveats that I would give patients, families, and doctors is don't expect dramatic results. Even patients that get treated are still in the hospital, usually for several weeks. You're just decreasing the time in which they can walk independently, but you don't get any miracle effects from these drugs, or from these treatments. And there's no reason to ever use both plasmapheresis or IVIG in the same patient. You make your decision on which one you want to use with the patient and family. You do the therapy and, 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 and you, wait, uh, you wait for them to improve. And finally, there's no reason to use steroids in Guillain-Barre syndrome. So I hope this review of a tale of two treatments, plasmapheresis and IVIG in Guillain-Barre syndrome, will be helpful to you in your practice. Thank you.